Another fascinating story is this railroad. Uh, you've been walking between here and the chalet, and you walk across what seems to be an abandoned railroad. Well, that at one time was a very busy railroad. It's called the Walk Hill Valley Railroad. At one time, in its, in its early days of construction, it was destined to be the main between Canada and New York, or the uh, terminus at Hoboken. There was a railroad building going on at that time. Vanderbilt's were putting together the New York Central Railroad on the east side of the Hudson River, whereas this Walk Hill Valley Railroad Company was building this one. Well, this railroad company here, they, they started their construction from the south, they came to this Round Out River Gorge, and uh, discovered they had to build this huge bridge, but there's where the work stalled. In the meantime, the Vanderbilt's won the race to Albany, and the New York Central became the main line. This would just be a secondary route. But when I came here with my father and mother and sister, 1928, this was a very busy railroad. Commuter traffic, all the people in the Walker Valley, which lay to the south of us, found employment in Kingston. Kingston was a big needle, needle uh, trades town. Dresses, shirts, pajamas. Uh, we have some famous uh, shirts made in Kingston. Manhattan shirts. Manhattan shirts. Oh, yeah. Made in Kingston. Uh, dresses, all kinds of dresses, dress factories. And uh, besides uh, that, there were... Jonathan Logan, was it Jonathan, Jonathan Logan? Jonathan Logan, Logan was in Kingston, yeah. Uh, Barclay oh. Knitwear. Uh, still here, it? Uh, the silk mill, what the name of the silk mill, I've forgotten. Uh, but, but besides uh, the needle trades and apparel, cigar making, there was a small manufacturer of automobiles, there was uh, two or three uh, metal foundries, so uh, everyone gravitated to Kingston for employment. The kids went to uh, high school by train. This train, uh, this railroad carried railway express, mail car, milk car, uh, way freight. They'd have a freight train come down every morning about 10 o'clock uh, past Binnywater here to stop at every station and unload uh, lumber, cement, various other materials that people would have ordered. And uh, railway express, uh, the farmers shipped their eggs to market by uh, railway express. But, uh, and, but the big money maker for the railroad was uh, coal freight. Anthracite coal from the Pennsylvania coal fields <coughs> on the way to uh, northern New York, uh, New England, and Canada. This was a uh, shortcut. And every single day, a huge, long train load of coal cars would come lumbering past. That uh, trestle over the round out gorge has a curve in it. So coming across that trestle in this direction, the trains had to go very, very slow. Now these trains were, were hauled by two coal-fired locomotives, double headers, small locomotives, compared to what you see in uh, diesel locomotives today. These were small. That trestle is at the bottom of a railroad hill. Where at the top? Doesn't look like much of a hill, but in fact, it's, they're, they're quite a bit lower in elevation than we are. Mm -hmm. Now, when those locomotives came to this side of the bridge, they had to get up ahead of steam and try to get some speed up so they could make this hill. Invariably, they would stall. The freight train would be so heavy and so long that the trains would stall. Right about opposite the main entrance of the hotel, they'd come to a grinding halt. <laughs> they had two ways that they could overcome this difficulty. The first way was the easiest, but invariably failed. The brakeman in the caboose would set the brakes, and then the train would back up, compressing all the couplings, bang, 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 making an awful racket. Then at a given signal, both lead locomotives would 
go full throttle ahead, the big drives wheel would grind on the rails, and the smoke and soot would shoot out of the chimneys, and the uh, sparks would fly, the forest would catch on, catch on fire, all kinds of excitement. And as those couplings stretched out, bang, 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 another big racket. Sometimes they got enough momentum in that way to make the hill, but invariably it failed. In the meantime, our crossing was blocked. To get from one side to the other, we had to crawl underneath the cars <laughs> and, or else drive all the way down to Binny Water and come back to the other side. It was a, a little bit of a handicap, but at the same time, it was exciting. When they couldn't make it on the first, on the second try, they tried another t method. They would split the train in half and pull half the train up to the top of the hill, just beyond the tennis court up there. And there was a siding up there. They parked that half of the train on the siding, back up for the other half of the train, pull up again with the second half, hitch on, and then go on to Kingston. Almost a daily occurrence. Were they ever on time? Siding. <laughs> <laughs> well, as years went by, one service after another was abandoned. The milk car was taken off. The railway express was taken off. The kids went to school by school bus instead of train. The women the needle by bus. Uh, gosh, the uh, passenger train, I guess uh, that disappeared even before. Before I never the, saw before it. Before the mail car. I never saw it. But uh, one after another, and the coal, the coal traffic disappeared when people started using oil heat in their homes. So then came to, to, came a time when uh, New York Central wanted to get rid of them. They did everything they could, but the various communities uh, on the line, they, they had a little pride in the railroad. They didn't want to see it go out of business. They, and uh, there's a lot of red tape involved with the Interstate Commerce Commission, so uh, they, they had to keep it going. But they didn't do work any, any work on the roadbed, on the ties, it deteriorated. Uh, when Penn Central was formed, they again tried to abandon the road, but uh, by this time the community interest in the railroad had declined, but there was one uh, manufacturer in Walden, which is about 30 miles south of here, he has a box factory. As a matter of fact, he makes boxes, gift boxes. But when you go to Saks Fifth Avenue or Altman's and uh, buy your Christmas present, uh, it's, it's a box that's generally made in Walden. And he needed a carload of merchandise a week, a of, of raw material. And he insisted on his rights in keeping that railroad open so he could be supplied with his raw material. But finally, Conrail convinced them, by this time it came under the possession of Conrail, uh, that they, they could service him by deadheading a car from the southern end of the line, uh, take care of his needs, if he would permit them to abandon this northern part. And uh, they came to an agreement, and uh, this northern part uh, went through abandoned proceedings, and two years ago, this spring, the rails were taken up. And that itself was a fascinating operation. There were two young fellows with some sophisticated machinery took that railroad apart in no time at all. And when they were doing it, I had to say to myself, by golly, 1878, when that railroad was, was completed, how many horses, mules, uh, how many men uh, had to do hard-breaking work to put that thing together? Absolutely amazing. 